Thank you for joining us in the newsroom. I am Mary Kanu. President Muhammadu Buhari has assured the Republic of Chad of his support and the backing of the Lake Chad Commission to ensure the political stability of the country. The President, while speaking at the extraordinary summit of the heads of state and government of the Lake Chad Basin Commission in Abuja, says he will remain committed to entrenching democracy and good governance in the region. He also added that he is worried about the incursion of rebels into Chad and fears that the consequence of a destabilized Chad will greatly impact the region. Students of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, have stormed the streets of Abeokuta, Ogun State, to demand the rescue of their colleague kidnapped by gunmen. Nathaniel Olayinka, a 400-level student of the Department of Aquaculture and Fisheries Management of the institution, was reportedly kidnapped in a private farm in Abule Itoko, Odeda local government area of the state. Demanding his release, the protesting student issued a 72-hour ultimatum for the federal and state government to ensure Olayinka's release from the captors. And gunmen have attacked Iwolo Oge police station in Izago local government area of Enugu State. Five persons, including police personnel, were third killed in the attack that saw the police facility totally razed alongside vehicles and other properties in the premises. Spokesman of the police command, Daniel Undukwe, confirmed the incident, saying the police commissioner, Mohamed Aliyu, would give an assessment of the damages and casualties. And the World Health Organization says all health workers and elderly worldwide could have been vaccinated against coronavirus by now if jabs have been distributed equitably. The head of the WHO, Tedros Ghebreyesus, in an appeal for more doses for poorer countries, said governments vaccinating low-risk groups were doing so at the expense of vulnerable people. He described the un unequal distribution as scandalous and said it was perpetuating the pandemic, adding that the world should aim to vaccinate at least 10% of people in every country by September and 30% by the end of the year. And in business, the Senate Committee on Communications has held a public hearing on a proposed legislation to empower the Nigerian Postal Service NIPOS to collect stamp duty for the federal government. NIPOS and the Federal Internal Revenue Service, FIRS, had been having issues over which of the government's agencies is constitutionally empowered to collect stamp duty in the country. The Postmaster General of the Federation, Ismail Adewusi, urged the National Assembly to expedite work on the bill, saying the present act was obsolete and inadequate in view of the rapid developments and changes in the industry. And Australia on Tuesday abruptly announced it would shorter its embassy in Afghanistan this week, expressing fears over the increasingly uncertain security environment in Kabul as foreign troops withdraw. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the facility would close as an interim measure on May 28th in, line, in light of the imminent international military withdrawal from Afghanistan. The United States and Allied forces are in the final stages of withdrawing their troops from Afghanistan, ending America's longest ever war, but heralding an uncertain future for a nation and the tightening grip of Taliban militants. And in sports, Manchester City's Pep Guardiola has been named Manager of the Year by England's League Managers Association. Guardiola steered City to the Premier League title and League Cup this season. And this Saturday, the Spaniard side will beat to the crowned kings of Europe for the first time when they face English rivals Chelsea in the Champions League final in Porto. And that's all on the newsroom. Do join us at the top of the hour for more updates. Many thanks for watching.